It's Diversity TV bringing you the untold stories for the week of June 25th, 2021. Hosted by myself, Harriet Tinker and Raya Sempala. Sponsored by Ray Z Plumbing and Heating. Here are the headlines for this week. June 21st was the National Indigenous People's Day and we captured some exciting stuff for you. June 20th was Father's Day. We're celebrating 23 fantastic dads across Alberta with you. This week, we captured some interesting stories from across the world to share with you. Now the news in detail. So segment one, Raya, are you looking for a job perhaps on Amazon or any of those modern warehouses? Or perhaps you know somebody who's looking for something like that. I am not Harriet, but if anyone is looking for a job at Amazon, there is a place for them to go, Solomon mm. College. The deadline is in two weeks for Solomon College's next intake into their free Quest program with almost 100% job success rate for students. That's impressive. When you hear 100%, most people are absolutely motivated to give it a try. Now, what else can you share with us so that the audience know how to take advantage of this option? Well, Solomon's College Key Workplace Essential Skills Training Quest program is a 12-week training program focused on equipping learners with technological skills, workplace essential skills, workplace safety certificates, and the employment readiness skills needed to find employment in the warehouse sector. Those are quite some skills, but I know even with any position, there's always some requirements needed to complete the whole program. Please tell us, what are the requirements? Yes, there are a few specific requirements that applicants need to have. So a minimum of CLB 3.6 in all skill areas. Um, applicants must be permanent residents or Canadian citizens mm -hmm. not born in Canada. No previous education in Canada except LINC or ESL, mm -hmm. which is an English learning program, mm -hmm. and also not unemployment insurance. Applicants also need to have basic computer skills. Those requirements are definitely attainable. Now, what is there a cost to this program? What is the tuition for anyone interested in, in taking advantage of this program? Now, as I mentioned before, it's free mm -hmm. for anyone interested or if anyone knows anyone who needs it. You can contact them on 587-938-3403 or you can go to www.solomoncollege.ca. I'm sure a lot of people will be taking advantage of this free option. On, on to segment two. There's some exciting news, and we're not only in Edmonton, we're not just in Calgary, we're not in Lethbridge, but we're going east. It's so exciting. Let us tell our audience what this is all about. It involves our diversity magazine. Yes, we will be answering the call for our diversity magazine ambassadors in Toronto to transform Alberta's largest multicultural publication to Canada's largest by launching in the Toronto area this summer. Stay tuned for more information. This is exciting. So I think a lot of us will be in despair wondering what's going to happen. Super exciting. On to segment three, and this is actually my favorite segment. I actually like fashion and food. So now with fashion, what is this thing they call VIP experience? I know I was just going through my research and I found out that KYN is bringing up this individualistic experience, which is kind of like a VIP experience. Yes. And I feel like our audience would be super interested. Let's tell them. Well, yes, some people do not like shopping in crowded spaces with lots of people and others like maybe yourself Harriet like mm -hmm. the VIP individualistic shopping experience where Absolutely. they can try on every dress on display without feeling that they're in the way of others 
This summer, Edmonton-based Afro-Western Fashion Line, KYN Apparel, mm -hmm. is organizing a VIP personalized shopping experience for shoppers to have a unique experience with their designs, fit, ask questions, and pick from any selection. That's exciting. And I know the owner who runs it, Aleth, she is so excited. She even gave us an opportunity to come in and take pictures. So they invited us in this exclusive invitation. So have a look at these photos and it's super exciting. You can also book your experience, your unique experience, so you can have your own individualistic VIP experience by going to their website, www.kynapparel.ca. Yes. Segment. Before we go to our next segment, let's have a word from our supporters. Segment four. This week, we're celebrating 23 fantastic dads across Alberta. Nine from Edmonton, eight from Calgary, two from Red Deer, two from Fort McMurray, one from Medicine Hut, and one from Grand Prairie. That's quite a, a range. It's not just in Alberta. I guess we're going all over. I mean, it's really in Alberta, I should say. But we're just hitting every place we can. And I'm sure there's so many other dads that would like to be on the list, but we can only do so much. So for more information on these fantastic stories of our fathers, they can go to www.diversitymag.ca and go on the awards and Father's Day. Yes. Segment five, coronavirus project cool times. I guess this is kind of um, the the what we are always talking about. It's now everyday life. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of us are very familiar with the coronavirus project cool times. But a bit of exciting news, I, I should say, because the Alberta Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Dina Henshaw, said. In her Facebook updates, and this is really good, exciting news, that COVID-19 will be with us for some time, but the cases are falling because of the vaccine uptick is rising. So this is encouraging for anybody who wants to start meeting with their friends and that sort of thing. But she also added some information for us. Yeah, she, she added that our numbers are declining quickly and that we have administered over 3.8% five million doses of COVID-19 vaccine. So 70.8% 70 of eligible Albertans have now been vaccinated with at least one dose and 30.4% are now fully immunized. And I think that's the goal they are looking for. So Pfizer and Moderna can be used interchangeably. So what that means, if you had Pfizer as your first shot, the next one can also be Moderna, which is great for people who are a little bit concerned. They say it's actually perfect okay to get one dose of each. Both are highly effective and protecting infections and severe outcomes. She says that their data shows that Moderna offers 93% protection after the second dose and Pfizer offers 90%. So a combination of both is really, really good news. Dr. Henshaw said, taking the first vaccine that is available to you is the best way to protect your health and the health of those around you. And this way you develop a stronger immunity as soon as possible. The first dose appointments are still available. So anyone who wants to get any of those, you can go online, get on the phone and book yours today. Yes. Although she continued that as restrictions will soon ease, we need to learn how to live with this virus. It is critical that we support each other with compassion. Precautions like avoiding crowded indoor areas or wearing masks mm -hmm. remain reasonable choices for some. Some may move at different paces. I agree. And also washing your hands. I think that's also very key. 
The Alberta Chief Medical Officer went on to say some rules will remain in Stage 3, which includes isolation for confirmed cases, quarantine for close contacts who are not fully immunized, and protective measures for the continuing care area. Yes, we will also maintain masking in continuing acute care, public transit, mm -hmm. taxis, and ride sharing. That's so important. She also concluded saying that the greatest, greatest act of kindness you can give yourself, your friends and family, and health of this province is to get vaccinated, both dose one and two, as soon as you can. The more people who get vaccinated, the safer we will all be in the weeks and months ahead. Absolutely important. Now, anybody interested, they can just get more COVID updates by going on the Alberta website, which is www.alberta.ca slash COVID-19. Before we go to our next segment, let's have a word from our supporters. Hello, my name is Anne with BCB in Action. Here we support, advocate, promote, and empower all black businesses in Western Canada. We do this by mentorship program, networking events, and training programs. Our goal is to have all black businesses thrive in the Canadian marketplace. Go to www.bcbinaction.org to find out how we can support you. Segment eight. So Harriet, what do we have today for our audience for Diversity TV International News? So for International News today, we have some mixed emotions. The president of Zambia, who was, he's about, it was 97 when he passed away. And he was the president since 1973. I don't think you were born in 1973. No, no. <laughs> you were you still, a, you didn't even exist. So he's been a president for that long. And what I really liked about president of Zambia, which I'm going to share his name, he had the same principles as Mahatma Gandhi. This former president of Zambia, one of African independence leaders who fought colonial rule, his name, Kenneth Kaunda and they called him KK, has died, born in 1924, and he passed away this year, 2021. Yes, that's uh, some sad news for our viewers. So rest in peace, Kenneth Kaunda. We do have some other international news as well. And this week, we're still, we're going to the Ivory Coast, which is in the west of Africa. In snot development, former Ivory Coast president, it seems like we're talking a lot about presidents yes, in this yes, international yes. news. Now share with our audience what this Ivory Coast president did. Yeah, so President Laurent Gabo, mumped by supporters lining the streets on his return to Ivory Coast after found not guilty by the International Criminal Court. I think that was shocking and, the, and more to come later, I'm sure, once the this news gets a little bit deeper because I, I think a lot of people were a little bit shocked that yeah. he was found not guilty. But that will be international news. We'll carry on with the update as they get developed. On to segment seven. I think this is my other favorite one. Yes, <laughs> we're talking about food. So what are we cooking for this week dish of the week wow this week is some yum yum food the delicious jollof rice a silasi's grill special and they're always always full of surprises and full of multicultural food now i know you you've been there once or twice yes their food is so good silasi's grill is a multicultural restaurant it serves west western chinese and african food it opened just a couple of months ago, opposite mm -hmm. Stadium, on 8604 112 Avenue, Edmonton, with a large parking space, a bar, a large dining space, a private meeting room, mm -hmm. and most importantly, delicious Western, African, and Chinese foods. Now that's multicultural eating. Bon appetit.
segment eight. We have lots of community announcements this week. Edmonton will host a very important diversity conference this summer on July 6 to 10 at 9 a.m., inviting big names like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. III. For tickets, please go to www.diversityconference.ca. And that conference has been one that we've talked about for months and months. So it'll be so exciting when they come to town and we can just have fun. The other announcement is a shallow version of the Edmonton City Hall Fountain. The fountain at Church Hill Square is now open to the public with some interesting guidelines. And this might be a little bit of a shocker for some people. Yes. Guideline 6. Persons with diarrhea or a history of diarrhea in the past two weeks are not permitted to enter the fountain. And that's something I guess people have to use their judgment. The next, next one is how would you improve policing? Tell EPS your feedback because it does matter. Everyone is welcome to share their ideas and experiences at this community listening sessions. But space is limited, so please register early or leave your comments at epsinput.ca. And some of the upcoming opportunities that anybody who wants to participate, they can just go online because everything is virtual. There'll be a Zoom listening session with Chief Dale McPhee. And the event will happen on June 29, 2021, from noon to, 12, to 2 p.m. To register, please go to www.epsinput.ca. Do you have a mentor or do you want one? Yes, I do. And for more people who are looking for one, the African Center is calling for mentors for its mentorship program in elementary, junior high, high school, and post-secondary school level. Contact Tawa at 780-455-5423, extension number 206. I think we all need a mentor, no matter what, no matter who you are, you need a mentor. Very important. And if you can definitely take part in that African Center call for mentors, do it. A 40-year-old Edmonton man, Andrew Donald, has been arrested and charged for impersonating a police officer, Edmonton police say. It was reported to police that on Thursday, May 27, 2021, at approximately 10.30 p.m., a female motorist was forced to pull over her vehicle on the Yellowhead Trail near 127th Street by another motorist who had pulled up beside her and deliberately driven into her lane while presented what appeared to be a police badge. It is then alleged that a male driver of the suspect vehicle walked up to the female complaints vehicle produced a badge and stated that he was a police officer that is shocking i cannot believe somebody who just impersonate somebody a police officer so that they can have a motive i'm sure they had a motive for that did they did they arrest him what, what is the end of the story well the suspect reportedly yelled at the complaint and threatened to give her a ticket for driving too slowly Skeptical of the suspect's claims of being a police officer, the female complainant obtained a license plate number and the suspect vehicle and contacted EPS. Investigators later confirmed the identity of the accused as being Andrew James Stewart Donald, 40 of Edmonton. Oh my goodness. Anyone who has had a similar experience with the accused is encouraged to contact the EPS at 780-423-4567 or hashtag 377 from a mobile phone. Any anonymous information can also be submitted to Crime Stoppers. And their number is? 1-800-222-847 or online at www.p3tips.com slash 250. Now, some really exciting news. I know that you like to dance. I know you like music. I know you like fashion. And I believe you're, you're also an artist, a poet. Do you do some poetry? I do do some poetry. But this is about the Afri-Carnival that is going to be hosting so many artists. Mm -hmm. A special Afri-Carnival will take place in Edmonton on Saturday, July 25th 
and on August 7, 2021, in Calgary with performances, food, exhibitions, fashion show, and more. If you're interested in joining or coming to the Africanival, please text 780-709-0965. So you said Calgary. Are we going to have anything in Edmonton, or is that to come later? It is. They're both going to be in Edmonton and Calgary. Oh, that's exciting news. So everybody watching, keep an eye on that, and we'll be getting more details as things get developed. Twenty first was and is National Indigenous Peoples Day in Canada, and it's celebrated with events showcasing cultural diversity of the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples across Canada. This was such an exciting event that Edmonton, the high level, always, always makes it a point to really showcase anything that's happening. So in this case, they showcase June 21st by highlighting the high level bridge in Edmonton for the National Indigenous Peoples Day in green, yellow, red, and white, because these colors really symbolizes the First Nations, Inuit, Métis Day, and it was exciting. Yes, the Two-Spirit Society poses for a photo after a culture performance on Jasper Avenue. The high-level bridge is lit every morning and evening to celebrate and build community spirit in Edmonton. And it's such a big deal because it's, it lights, beautif beautifies the city's skyline and serves as a symbol of pride, memories, and celebrations within Edmonton and beyond. Happy National Indigenous Peoples Day. Before we go to our next segment, let's have a word from our supporters. Clinical tested cosmetic for all skin types. Our science-based formula provides anti-aging protection, rejuvenate and nourish your skin while helping to improve skin conditions such as acne, black spot, and irregular skin tone. How to use it? Step 1. Wash your face with cleanser lotion, rinse well, then pat dry with a clean towel. Step 2. Use a cotton pad or hands to apply botanical toner on your face, neck and body until complete absorption. Step 3. Apply a small amount of serum C intensive with fingertips to freshly cleansed and toned face, neck, and décolleté areas. Step 4. Apply a small amount of face cream to cleansed skin with gentle patting motions. Until absorbed. Loose, uplift the skin tone, naturally. Segment 10. On top of his 14 points, that has created a huge impact in his community and created a blueprint for others to follow is a census, a survey to have a snapshot of the population of Sierra Leoneans in Edmonton. Now I know who you're talking about and the audience might not know so we better see who the doctor is. Dr. Abu Conte. He is here to tell us more on Diversity TV. We're able to get part of the funding that Synchronia Community Development Organization pledged, right? They were able to give just a fraction of what they actually promised. And the balance, we supplemented that from funds from the association. That enabled us to actually conduct the survey. Now we have a document which is the first ever Silion Association of Alberta Community-Wide Census, right? Which has been helping us plan ahead, which has been helping us in our grant application. A number of these grant applications will ask us about demography, how many people we have in different categories, whether you're talking about seniors, whether you're talking about women, how many employed, how many unemployed. We've been using uh, this information. So the bottom line here is, yes, we have a census document, the first ever in the Sierra Leone community of Alberta, right? And that is what has been helping us with our operation. And it's also helping us forecast what needs to be done. So there we are. Thank you for watching Diversity TV Community Newscast. I'm Harriet Tinker. And I'm Raya Sampala. You can follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. We also have a website, which is www.diversityplus.ca. 
See you next week.